Why do I do this? Hold me here, man. Het komt hier wel, het komt hier niet. Sommige mensen denken dat je dat nooit weet. Maar graag een hartelijk welkom voor Larry Norman. Oh, mama killed a chicken. She thought it was a duck. She put it on a table with its legs sticking up. Daddy broke his glasses when he fell down drunk. Tried to drown the kitty cat, turned out to be a skunk. You, you gotta watch what you're doing. Don't you know? You gotta watch what you're doing. Yeah, you know that. Little did I know when I gave my heart that a self woman would tear it all apart she told me uh, she loved me i believed her and then i caught her running around with my best friend you gotta watch what you're doing yeah you gotta watch what you're doing yeah i knew a girl she was sweet as could be She fell for men like a chainsaw tree. She listened to their lies. She was fooled by their charm. Now she's sitting with the baby in her arms. You gotta watch what you're doing. You know that. Yeah. You gotta watch out. Watch out. You got to watch what you're doing. I grew up in a, a neighborhood which was a black neighborhood. So the first music I heard was black Christian songs, gospel hymns. And my family, uh, my father worked in the railroad. My mother stayed home with three of us. And my father also went to school during the day because he, he knew he couldn't support his family at, at the railroad. So he became a school teacher many years later. And what was it like with what... Uh people did you get around? Well, at first, the black kids in, uh, in grammar school, or I don't know what you call it, kindergarten, first grade, second grade. And then uh, we moved to a better neighborhood, which had a lot of uh, Puerto Ricans and Philippines and uh, white kids. But it was the time, of, it was in the 50s, you know, gang fights and stuff. So it was, uh, I got beat up a lot outside in the streets because it was so violent. It was a game, you know. What was your social life like with the family? Did you go to church, or uh, how did your father raise you up? Or Yes, yes, every Sunday we went to church, and every Wednesday or Thursday we went to something, a prayer meeting or a training union or a Bible study or something. And then uh, I liked to go to church. I wanted to hear more about Jesus. So I also went around the corner to someone's house, and they would read Bible stories and and give us cookies. We were six years old, seven years old. You know, uh, like some people go through life like everything's really cool for them, you know, they're, they're all right. Yeah, my pro I, I, I got no problems, man. It, my life is good. What? God? Of course I believe in God. Sin? Yeah, I've heard of it. I even know some people who do it. Some people smile, they seem all right. Later you find out that it's more like demons in the night, you know. You should love everybody, but don't be blind. Some people say that God is dead, that he doesn't exist except inside your head. I wonder how many gonna be surprised when they look straight up and see him coming through the sky.
1965, I didn't hear any music. I didn't know what was going on. I wrote my own songs, but I heard nothing on the radio because it was forbidden in our house. Then, uh, see, when the Beatles came and Bob Dylan came, music be became popular for boys. No longer were boys only interested in baseball and football. You know, now they, they were interested in music. So that's why there were more musicians around, so I could have a band, because a lot of people studied instruments. Um, and the, w the way it changed was, uh, although I didn't listen to the radio, my father still had said, you know, as long as you live at my house, no radio, no rock and roll. But now everywhere at the school, somebody had a radio during lunchtime, you know. Uh, people turned up their cars and rolled down the windows. So I heard all kinds of rock and roll without ever turning on the radio myself. Could you just play the song from beginning to end? Yeah. I usually do it and let me sing the part, but don't stop. I won't. Don't talk. For time, okay. So much. You can Learn the song. Yeah. You can. Ben just played it for me. Put your life in Jesus' nail-scarred hands. Oh, put your life in Jesus' nail-scarred hands. He's a rock of ages. He's a sage of sages. He's the key to the promised land. So put your life. Jesus nail scarred hands. Now I expect you to sing this. Whenever we sing it, I expect you to sing it. If you aren't listening to the words, make them up. Put your life in Jesus nail scarred hands. rock and roll before Elvis came along and tried to steal it. Uh, Capitol Records gave me a recording contract, so I made an album called We Need a Whole Lot More of Jesus and a Lot Less Rock and Roll. And did you perform them on yeah. places? Yeah, so about two or three concerts every week. You know, finally the hippies came along, so then uh, there were a lot of places to play where I could see these people took drugs. They needed to, you know, become yeah. Christians. 
So, uh, tell me, how, what did you do in the concert? You played the music, what did you say in between, and what did you share? Well, I was very young, I was 18 years old, so I said the best I could, but I, I don't know if it made sense to someone on drugs. They liked Jesus. They didn't, they didn't, they liked Jesus and Buddha and uh, John Wayne and yeah. the Hells Angels, you know. It, he was very popular, the birds did well, songs Well, they thought Jesus, Jesus was an outlaw, that he lived in a commune with his friends and that he refused to be part of the establishment. So it's very hard to tell them, no, Jesus is more than that. Jesus is the savior of the world. Jesus uh, died for your sins. You need to be forgiven and you need to stop taking drugs and you need to stop sinning. You need to... It was just very hard to talk to him. Some say he was an outlaw, that he roamed across the land. With a band of unschooled ruffians and a few young fishermen. No one knew just where he came from or exactly what he'd done. But they said it might be something bad that keeps them on the run. Some say he was a poet, that he'd stand up on the hill, and his words could calm an angry crowd or make the waves stand still. And he spoke in many parables that few could understand, but the people sat for hours just to listen to this man. Some say he was a sorcerer, a man of mystery. He could walk upon the water, he could make a blind man see. And he conjured wine at weddings and did tricks with fish and bread. He spoke of being born again, he raised people from the dead. Some say he was a politician, he always talked of being free. He was followed by the people on the shores of Galilee. He spoke out against corruption and he bowed to no decree. And they feared his strength and power, so they nailed him to a tree. Some say he was the son of God, a man above all men. But he came to be a servant and to set us free from sin. And that's who I believe he is, cause that's who I believe. I think we should be ready when it's time for us to leave. And I think we should get ready, cause it's almost I don't sing so that I can be in music. I sing so that I can be in people's lives. They come up after the concerts and, and talk to me. Sometimes they say, I don't believe in, in God, I don't believe in Jesus, but your songs, they make sense to me. So I feel like I am already believing the things you believe, but I, explain to me more, tell me how you, what, what you uh, think. Is the Dutch audience uh, less responsive? Uh, the Dutch are quiet. The Dutch say, I will listen, I will think about it, and you must prove to me that I should uh, believe you. And I like this. It's a, you know, it's good. <laughs>
came for him in the garden, did they know? Someone is going to come up to you and he's uh, going to ask you, uh, well, you're a Christian, you say you're a Christian, so why you should, you should stick to it instead of, well, being a Buddhist or someone, whatever? Well, you have to close your mind down and you have to ask God to show you something that you cannot see with your own mind. God has to reveal something. God has to reveal that Jesus is the direct path that goes to the door of heaven. Only God can reveal that to you. You cannot philosophically, intellectually decide for yourself because you say, well, what about Buddha? What about Muhammad? What about asceticism? What about drugs? What about, you know, the mind is, is not the mind of God. Our mind is limited. So you, when you have your mind filled up with all the questions, then you must ask God. I don't know if you are the God of Buddha. I don't know if you're the Jesus. I don't know if you're the God of Muhammad. So you tell me, who are you? Show me the truth. And then God, because he is the God of Jesus, God will show you Jesus. And then you have to believe with the faith that, okay, I believe God is talking to me, and I believe God is telling me the truth. So I will become a Christian. So I became a Christian because what I read made sense, but then I had to jump over all of my knowledge and, and jump off of a cliff of my mind and ask God to catch me and ask God to show me which direction should I walk. As time went by, people began to forget until at last no one could remember and there was sadness. tune there never was. It's only a myth. <laughs> These were the philosophers. You mean, you, you mean there's no tune at all? Well, it doesn't really matter what tune you sing, as long as you sing something and you don't hurt anybody. These were the religious leaders. And so the world continued 
side of a hill, a man appeared with a smile on his face and kind of a sad look too. Some of the people began to sing along. Shut up, there is no tune, there never was, there never will be, it's only a myth. <laughs> well, it doesn't really matter what tune you play, as long as you play something and you don't hurt anybody, especially don't hurt, don't hurt me. And he looked at them, and he shook his head. And the people that loved him decided to follow him. decided to kill him, and they did. And when it was finished, they went back into their houses of philosophy and religion, and they sat down to their tables to eat and to drink. They were interrupted. And they wondered, who could this be singing the tune? It was him. And they ran out into the streets only to see something very strange happen. How did he do that? I don't really know, but when trouble goes, you don't ask where. He's gone, and I, I can't see him. And he'll never return ever again. I hope. <laughs> and they went back into their houses, to their tables, to sit and eat and drink food that was lukewarm. They were interrupted. They were beginning to get indigestion. <laughs> this time they ran out into the streets to lay hold of him. But they couldn't find him anywhere. Just a lot of people walking around kind of smiling. And they all knew the tune. something. They know something strange about these people. If they made a mistake, they didn't continue singing. They stopped. And they listened. La, 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 la. the tune went because they listened well if you're listening 
All around us, there's a tune. Oh yeah, all you have to do is listen. And you can hear it, it's everywhere. Read the newspapers, listen to the radio, read Playboy. You can hear that tune, but if you listen very quietly, you can hear another tune. But you have to listen quietly, and you have to listen every day. ook bij, uh, bij het concert. Heb je, heb je begrepen waar hij het over had? Met wat, wat hij wou zeggen met die teksten? En wat hij wou uitleggen? Uh, ja, uh, ja, hoe die lezen. Hij wou laten zien hoe die, hoe die lezen. Wat doe je als, die, als je zulke soort dingen hoort? Hoe reageer je daarop? Ja, negatief. Uh, ik, uh, ik... Het, het, het interesseert me niet eigenlijk. Gewoon. Ja. Ik, uh, ik leef uh, met mijn eigen gewoon uh, hoe ik. Ja. ik. Ik heb God zelf niet nodig, vind ik zelf. Dus, ja. Zijn gezelschap kan ik wel missen, toch? Ik heb het al, al die jaren al zonde gedaan. Ja. Hoezo nou wel? Ja, soms, soms denk ik wel eens, weet je wel, dan denk je dat hij wel bestaat, weet je wel. Dan gebeurt er weer eens wat. En, uh, maar ja, toch niet echt mee. Oh, het geheel toch niet. God is real. And God loves us. And we have to become communicated and, and uh, involved with God. Otherwise our life shall be as someone who is floating free in space. We will go here and we'll go there, but we have no direction that is firm. So I would tell everyone, look out and say, God, are you there? If you are there, then show me so that I may believe. And which is the door? Is it, is it drugs? Is it heaven? Uh, is it a, a philosophy like Marxism? Or is it Buddha? Or is it world peace like Gandhi? Or is it Jesus? I don't know. Because you are God, you know everything. So you show me which is the true path. And then I will do that. God bless you. Good night.